your boy, I swear, he runs like he owes somebody money. I love it. What is up, everyone? It is Jake with Master Football. Beautiful Friday. Happy Friday. And thank you so much for coming to my channel. All right. So I heard this term the other day, and this is truth. Uh, a ninja watcher, okay? 84% of my views are for people who are unsubscribed, okay? Please, subscribe to the video, okay? Like, share, subscribe. Mostly just the like and mostly just the subscribe. If you share, cool. But like, share, and subscribe my video. Without further ado, let's get going. Okay, so Obscure Prospect series. All right, I love this series. It's my most popular series, bar none, not even close. I honestly think that like 70 to 80% of my views come from this series. I love it. So with that, we've looked at a couple different people. We've looked at some offensive linemen, some receivers. Uh, we've looked at some defensive linemen, some, some corners, some linebackers. We've seen a lot of different positions. I want to talk about a position that is, it's one that is, is not very seen highly by a lot of uh, draft experts. Now, it's seen highly by a lot of people who watch a lot of football, but people who draft experts, the, the running back position has kind of been taking a hit. There's a lot of analytical guys out there. I know I'm a big fan of pro football focus. And pro football focus, they're the kind of guys who they think that you should not be touching a running back until round four. That's when they, their wins above replacement, their war score isn't very high. Shouldn't be drafted in the first round, maybe not even the second round. Third, fourth, maybe, yeah, whatever. Because you can get guys like Aaron Jones in the fifth round versus spending a first round pick on somebody who of a position that you can get. It's kind of like the, the scenario of fantasy football. Quarterbacks actually score the highest amount, but you want to pick your running backs early because you can pick a quarterback late. You cannot pick a running back late. However, that's flipped in the NFL draft. You can get running backs late. You can't get quality corners late. You can't get quality defensive linemen late. They are more rare. Now, let's talk about our friend, uh, a guy from the uh, the beautiful desert. Okay, he's a running back. He's actually he's been I don't know if he's he's kind of like a a running back who hasn't gotten as many touches as you would have liked, but shows a lot of promise. The name. Is running back from the University of Arizona, Mr. Gary Brightwell. All right, Gary Brightwell, class of 2017, committed to the University of Arizona and enrolled in June. Uh, originally is from Middleton, uh, Middletown, Delaware, and had offers from Arizona, Delaware State, Stony Brook. Uh, but he, he decided, you know, Temple, like I said, uh, decided to go to the University of Arizona because he, you know, he's from Middleton. He wants to go out there in good, beautiful Tucson. Look at him right here, 5'11", 187. That number is going to change. Your boy's going to put on a little bit of weight. So we come to him now, 6'1", apparently he got taller, 6'1", 218 from Chester, Pennsylvania. Uh, he's uh, right here, honorable Pac-12 mention before the 2020 season. Uh, finished 8th in the, eighth in the Pac-12, 409 rushing yards despite having two games canceled because of COVID. Um, and he eclipsed the 100-yard mark in two of his five games after entry the year with three 100-yard rushing games and 23 career appearances. And of course, you know me, checking out the major, majoring in literacy, learning, and leadership. Again, love that. Not a comm degree. Uh, I can work with that. Okay, I like that. Checking out his ESPN stats. Okay, we see here 88 carries for 390 yards, 4.4 uh, yards per carry, one touchdown uh, in his last year, uh, long of 34 yards, uh, receptions, uh, 13 for 53. That will be actually be an issue that he has. You'll, you'll see that the receptions was kind of, his, his role in the passing game was kind of hurt there. But you'll see, I mean, look at that, 88 carries, 66 carries, 91 carries. Not a lot of touches there. I mean, we've got maybe, what was that, 88 plus 13, that is 101 touches, uh, 70 touches the year before, and 100 touches the year before. So just doesn't have a lot of work under his belt. However, that actually might be a good thing going to the NFL. You do not want a Monty Ball with, you know, uh, 1,000 career carries going into the NFL. These running backs have a finite amount of time they can make their money, so maybe that could help them out in the future. All right, time for the pro football focus stuff. So their bottom line on them, they say he's he's you know, rough around the edges, but you know he is a violent runner. So you'll see him, and he is north south. You're going to see right here. He is a one cut guy up the field. Uh, he does not like to do a lot of dancing. Doesn't like to play around. He he's. I actually didn't see the physicality. They said they say he's a pretty violent runner. Uh, runs angry. He does run angry. I don't necessarily think he's looking for contact. I heard this a while back about uh, Trent Richardson. Trent Richardson. 
Um, the problem with Trent Richardson is he doesn't avoid contact or deliver contact. He absorbs contact. I don't see that with him. I actually see the fact that he's a bigger back 218, 61, 218, who actually wants to, he wants to juke people. He doesn't want to run people over. If he had the choice between the truck stick or the juke, he would choose the juke. He's pretty good at juking. If you'll see here in, in a second, uh, man, he hits the, he hits the line of scrimmage at full speed. He, he is awesome. Your boy, I swear he runs like he owes somebody money. I love it. North South style of runner, uh, really bursts a good burst out of his cuts, really explosive. His issue is again once once he sets his mind, he's going in that hole. Uh, he had five drops on a twenty three career catchable targets. Basically, if you're throwing the ball, you want him off the field. Uh, never had more than eighty nine carries in a season. It said he had ninety one in the sophomore sophomore year, so that might be incorrect. But overall, I mean, he's got a guy who I'm telling you. If he's on the field, he is a dynamite running back. However, can he stay on the field for third down? The problem that in the NFL, if they know you, you can only run the ball, they're going to sell out against the run. If they're like, that guy back there is absolutely worthless when it comes to the passing game, we're not even going to worry about the passing game because we know they have to run because he can't pass protect, he can't catch, he's not uh, useful in that, in that territory. Now, there are some offenses that could use that, an offense that, uh, you know, play-action game where all he needs to do is just is to occupy somebody this way, uh, maybe like a stretch a play-action game where he runs over here, quarterback boots to the right, and he doesn't have to block anybody because just by him going over there, he's, he's done his job, essentially. All right, I want to show you guys a couple of his clips. I want to show one play in particular. He's gonna, he, you're gonna see this play is the epitome of what he can be. Okay, he's going to put his foot in the ground, juke a guy, put his foot in the ground, and juke another guy and score a touchdown. It's pretty awesome. Let's take a look right here. So again, this is in between plays. This is in a highlight tape. So Sean Bielasic, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that name, but I'm gonna go ahead and credit credit to his channel. Link will be in the description. You'll see this whole highlight tape. So he's gonna get the ball. He's gonna make a cut get downfield, make another cut, and get upfield. It's really, really impressive to watch. So let's check it out. Right here. Cut. Ooh, cut. Ooh, cut. Ooh, get off me. Touchdown. Boom. Now, again, you saw at the end there, he's, he will put his head down to get forward for yards when there's nothing else to do. But for him, he wants to juke you. That's his number one thing. When I see a lot of his highlights here, he wants to juke. He wants to run by you. He doesn't want to run over you. But still, love it. Super explosive, great cuts, moves pretty well for a big guy. My pro comparison for him, so it might just be the dreadlocks, I'm sorry, but my pro comparison for him would be Devontae Freeman. They just, they move the same. Their 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 foot speed, uh, their down, cut, down the field ability. I think that Devontae was probably a better dancer. Devontae could definitely catch better than this guy, but he is, uh, they kind of move the same. He's a bigger version of that. Now, again, people might say, I don't want a running, a big running back to play small. Again, don't worry about it. Kevin Durant is a is a you know a really big guy who plays a small position. So you can be a bigger guy like that. Two eighteen, he has the ability to put his head down. But if you two eighteen can juke you, man, that he's going to be juking guys in the front end of the, of the defense, and he's going to be running over guys in the back end of the defense. He's a dynamite prospect if you look at that from that perspective. All right, everybody, check out Gary Brightwell. Love it. Please, again, one for the last time, like, share, subscribe to the channel. So please subscribe, okay? I got 80% of you people out there that ain't subscribing, okay? You're not subscribing. Subscribe to the damn channel, to the darn channel. Sorry, don't, don't bleep me. Anyways, I will see you guys on Monday, and have yourself a good weekend.